everyone. I'm Jennifer Bloom, host of Soul Wisdom Abundance, Create Wealth Through Spiritual Health. And as always, I'm just thrilled that you're here uh, joining me and uh, my guests as we talk about new ways to think about money, new ways to do money, new ways to participate with money, all things money, spirit, all of that. Um, and, you know, I think really the word that I like to use is consciousness, consciousness around money, consciousness about who we are, what we like with money, what we want with money, because when we come into alignment, we're able to create things in ways that we haven't before. Um, and when we, we create consciously, we are, my language for it is leaning on the soul money relationship. And when we do that, right, then we're able to really be in the space of creating things that last for us. When we create out of our money wounds, our past pains, our past, who we thought we should be with money, things don't tend to last. And of course, we all do that from time to time, even those of us who talk about consciousness. Um, so this is this conversation is really all about how can I really be more in alignment with what it is that I want. And I have a really phenomenal guest, uh, and it was going to be a great conversation. So let me just lay the foundation here, and then I will introduce her. So I talk about the soul money relationship and within that relationship, there are three different aspects. We've got the relationship with ourselves, relationship with the divine and the relationship with money. And I have spent a lot of these podcasts talking about self and divine. And we do not want to leave out the, the part where we were actually talking about the tangible aspects of money, right? That's what we're, that's our goal. And so when you're thinking about this relationship with the tangible energy of money, this is all about how you trust money. Do you trust yourself with money? Are you feeling that you can be in integrity as you bring in more and more dollars? Are more and more dollars what you really want? Uh, what is it that you want that money to go towards? It's not about, we're not here to create stockpiles. We're here for it to be a tool. And so my guest today is going to really help us explore all of this. Uh, she has a background as a certified public accountant, CPA, certified public uh, financial planner. I have all my notes here. You've got so many certifications, Alana, I tell you. Um, and she's a personal financial specialist. So she's got the background in all of the money systems. But what's really interesting is she's also a certified human design expert, level four, for those of you who know what that means, I'll have to ask her what that means. Uh, which, and the reason why I, I really perked up when I heard about this conversation or this combination was because it's about using those money systems but in alignment with who you are personally. I don't know, um, those of you out there listening have had experiences with, with planners, financial planners before, but my experience has been that it's sort of a one size fits all system. And that's been really frustrating for me. Um, I think that people have good information. I don't wanna say they don't, but when I don't feel like I'm involved, I'm just sort of going along, I'm following all the tick marks. It just doesn't feel quite right. So um, one little last piece of information here. In conversation, I have heard Alana refer to herself as the rebel CPA, which of course meant that she had to be here. So Alana Heim, welcome. I'm so glad uh, to be talking with you today. Yay, thank you, Jennifer, for having me. I'm excited to be here on this, this podcast. Yeah, I, I'm curious to see where our conversation goes, because we could really talk about a lot of things. Uh, but let's let's start with the basics, um, because you have all of these different certifications in money in the money systems. And what was tell us a little bit about the transformation you went through to go from being just I don't know if you can say just a CPA. I know how much training goes into that. Um, to being somebody who's interested in human design and really wanting to look at the personal aspect of a money system with someone. I feel like there's a calling within each of us. There's a timing, there's something that just shows up that says, I think I'm supposed to be doing something different. And that nudge came 
when my twins were born a, a little after I was the CPA doing tax seasons, working my tail off, realizing I wasn't really with my family and they're my highest priority. They're my value. And yet I wasn't with them. And so I just had this deep, long love of learning and had to listen to things as I was sitting at my desk, you know, working on returns. And I, that's when I found human design. And so ultimately it was that piece that was just kind of shattered my 3d world of I'm actually different than this, this world. I'm here to help people in a way that I was seeing was missing in, in the industry itself. So I, worked with many clients that could be, let's say millionaires. And I know too many people who want to become the millionaire, yet it was the facade. They lived the part, but they weren't fulfilled. They didn't have the money when the tax bill came, their relationship was failing. They were just heavily leveraged. All of these pieces that ultimately meant, okay, they don't have it all and they're not feeling that fulfillment. They don't know themselves. And especially in the work with estates, trusts, people passing, right? There's lots of pieces of grieving, emotions, fears, and then this sense of entitlement or people wanting whatever was going to be given to them. And yet they didn't know how to manage it. They didn't trust their siblings. And so it always ended in litigation and it was just very horrific to watch and to see that you could have the best laid plan with your estate and your attorneys. And yet nobody ever actually had the financial conversation. They didn't sit down. Mom and dad didn't sit down with the kids to say, Hey, this is what we're planning. This is what we see. We're going to leave this to you. How do you feel about that? Right? Because a lot of times they had all of these assets, maybe even businesses that meant the kids were just sucked into it to be co-owners. And maybe they didn't want any part of the business. Maybe they really didn't want any part of um, the asset, but then they couldn't sell because the other sibling didn't want to. So, you know, there's just all these things that showed up and that's where I realized people need more support going inward with talking about money, having this relationship with themselves and money, and really understanding who they are. Yeah, you know, as you're speaking, the thing that I that kept popping up in my head was, you know, I'll hear clients say to me, well, I think one of my thoughts is that money brings problems, right? Money, more money means more problems. Lots of money means lots of problems. Do you think that that's accurate or do you think that's a symptom of something else it's the symptom of creating your own imprisonment in your mind and what you believe you make happen so it becomes that reality whatever you think you create and if you think that money is going to bring more problems there's something you've picked up along the way that has created that aspect of how you view money and almost how you view yourself right? Because if you think you're going to have more problems, maybe you already have some that you haven't taken a deeper dive into to figure out or unleash or shift so that you really can go have more fun and joy with money and play and create for the world. Yeah, absolutely. And it's how you structure your understanding of yourself, right? How you, and then I would imagine too, how you structure the money on the, on the other side. You know, we had a system, I'll just share one story. We had a, in my family, uh, my grandfather set up a trust um, for my grandmother, which turned out to be a really good thing until she wasn't living anymore. And then all of the remaining money, and there wasn't a lot left over, but it was all going to the lawyers and to the bankers. And we finally had to have a family meeting and say, let's, you know, let's, um, Let's break this out because there's nobody's really winning here except for the bank, which, you know, everybody has to make their own money. But, you know, um, so I think that right, there's a lot of steps that can help us be able to be comfortable so that money can come in lots of forms and we don't have to be worried about it. Um, OK, so, you know, I'm marginally familiar with human design. I would imagine that some of the listeners understand human design and other people have no idea about it. Can you give the sort of a nuts and bolts, basic description of what human design is? Yeah, it's a, a pretty cool blueprint energetically of who you are. 
who you're designed to be, not who mom and dad wanted you to be, not who society wants you to be, but ultimately taking some astrology components, weaving in the Hindu chakra system, looking at the Chinese e ching really taking a deeper dive into these energies that have been around forever because everything is created as energy and is energy. So when you can really take a look at the energy that you receive from the world versus the energy that you radiate out into the world, it's a game changer because a lot of times if you thought you were emotional and maybe you were actually feeling the world around you, right? You had no discernment to know that that energy actually could manipulate you to say things, to do things, to make decisions financially that weren't congruent or aligned for you. And I see that a lot in the financial industry where we're the experts, right? And we're the, we're the guru in the field and now you want help. And so you go to this person who tells you what to do. Nobody should tell you what to do. For us to be truly sovereign and have our free will, we need to trust our own intuition, our instinct, know how we make our own decisions. And human design is the tool that can really help you to see, ooh, I feel the energy coming in and it's not me, it's you. Maybe I need to step away to be in my own sphere, to be able to really come to the aligned decision that's true for me, not the pressure I was feeling from those who were outside of me. Uh, what a what a different way to approach working with money, right? I, I think about um, I think about times I had been in the past with financial planners, and I think about people that I've talked to in in relationship with money and being able to hold that sovereignty when it comes to money is a challenge for people. I think we've been taught that you know, either actually literally taught or whether it comes through this collective unconscious that we all seem to be plugged into that, you know, money has all of this power and we are just here asking for it and hoping for it. Um, when instead really it's about being able to, again, that word sovereignty, right? Have our own sovereignty and understand that money is a piece of the puzzle. How would you describe that in yeah. terms, yeah, with sovereignty and money and power. and So you, you hit the, it's the reverse of money is power. Money is the reflection of you. You are the power. And sometimes we're afraid of our own power because we've never been free to explore it. We've never been allowed to put it out into the world, right? Growing up or whatever your experiences are, somebody told you to stop. Somebody told you to play smaller. You can't be the millionaire. You can't be the artist. They're going to starve. You, you'll never make money. So it's it's all of these pieces that come in. And then I see where you are this power. And then there's the fear of success that can come through. Yes, we're afraid of failing. But some of us are also afraid to actually be that power and to allow that success in whatever that looks like. That can be financial. It can be other aspects in your life. But when you hold back, right. And you're afraid that it's just going back to the piece that you said about the problems. If you believe money brings problems, you don't want the success because you're already afraid of that responsibility. You don't know how to manage money. I'm not good with numbers. Like I hear all of these stories and these pieces that we've held on to. but what if you really could find the right advisor and they're out there that, gets you and knows that you're actually in charge and you get to make the decisions and you get to say what you want to invest in and what feels aligned for you. And if they give you an option and you say no, they honor that because it's not about them having their ego be, you know, helped along the way because it's, it's not about them. It's about you making that choice. And so it's taking back even that power in your financial relationships within yourself, within your home, within the people that you work with that are here to support you. Oh, that word support is big, isn't it? It's yeah. right. They're not here to lead and direct you. They are here to support you. And uh, I think that that you said it too. I think that's scary sometimes for people, especially in the area of money, because it feels so important, right? And 
we need to save. And I, I remember being in college and graduating from college and I was getting I was getting ready to get married and we wanted to have children right away and hearing, oh, you need to save for college. You need to save for college. You need to save for, oh, it's astronomically going up. And it it did. <laughs> they were right about that. But, you know, and, and the drum beating. And if you're not saving X by the time you're 20 or by 25, what's going to happen to your retirement? And, you know, I know there's different ways to look at that. I and mean, clearly fear-based is not what I would recommend. Um, but it seems a lot of fear comes out of the financial industry. So, from your rebel CPA views, tell me a little bit about, let, let's talk a little bit about some of those money milestones and what you think about those and in light of maybe, well, let's talk about the money milestones first, then we'll talk about it in light of the conversation we've been having about power and, and all of that. So, he, so going to your example of saving for college, what if you don't even want to go to college? What if you don't believe in that system? Why are you going to save for something that you don't want? Well, normally we do it because we, we were told we should, right? And we voluntarily follow the rules and voluntarily follow the way it's been done. And the rebel in me says, well, if we ask questions and we start diving deeper into what is it I actually want to create in the world? What value do I want to bring? Who do I want to be? Maybe going into the college system actually isn't for you. And that is okay. I feel like I've learned so much about myself and, you know, human design and all these different techniques and tools outside of going to college to become the accountant and the CPA. I learned this on my own. And when we have a lifelong love of learning, we're going to go figure it out. We don't need a system that's going to present a certificate to tell you who you are and what you're good at. So if you want to save, right, maybe you have children and you want to help them have an education but maybe you don't have to put it in, you know, the, the college funds. Maybe you do put it in life insurance. There's some, there's some tools and things that you can do in a way that allows you to pull the money, use it however you want, set your kids up. Maybe that's the money that seeds them starting the business that they want in the future. And that already is going to create so much value. Yes, for them personally, but to exchange it out in the world to be of service so it's, it's taking apart kind of the way we thought things had to be. And same with retirement. Maybe you love your work because you're so aligned. You know you're never going to retire. Your work is your life and your life is your work. And it's so intermingled that you don't need to save traditionally. Maybe your business is even your retirement piece. You know, So there's just different ways of thinking and seeing it that it doesn't have to be the traditional way that the CPAs are going to tell you or the planners are going to tell you. It's what resonates with you and you know deeply, just intuitively know this is my path. I can't go that route. I can't do what mom and dad want. I can't go to college to get the degree I don't really want. I want to go this way. And you trust that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So much individualism in what you're speaking about, right? Yeah. Um, well, one question I want to ask here is why do you think that so much of the information coming out of the financial industry is fear-based? Everything's fear-based. There's <laughs> lots, there's lots of control and power and manipulation in it. And really when you, when you kind of take a step back and look at how our systems are designed, the whole education system keeps you in a system to learn, to become workers. And then when you become a worker, you're going to immediately go right into the paycheck. You're going to get the job and you're going to, you're going to stick with that. Right. And as we shift values, as we get older, right. In our twenties, our values are not the same as they are when we're in our thirties or our forties, right. 20, you don't have responsibilities. You can live freely. You can travel. Maybe you don't have kids yet or a family. And then as things shift, you become really kind of enmeshed and encapsulated in the need for that paycheck. And so the fear piece that I, I often teach in, in uh, my human design classes, this is the pattern, this is what happens. You have the paycheck and if you lose the job, immediately you feel like you can't pay the bills, which means you can't support yourself or your family. And then you're gonna lose your home and then you're gonna end up on the street and then you're going to die. Like that's the fear platform. That's how we think. And when you can start to go, ooh, 
what if I am sovereign and can take back my power and be more responsible for myself? I want to start a business, right? Now we're starting to shift the way that we're attached to it. We start not being afraid if we lose the job because we know how to go out and make money or bring it in because money doesn't have to come in through earning. It can come in in whatever way that you're open to receiving it. And so you just start to shift and realize you always have had the power to call it in, to bring it forth, and you'll never end up on the street because that's not your focus, right? You're, you're not, you're not worried about that anymore. You're, you're more in that creator producer mode and helping to create more value in the world. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. I, I work um, in my classes to really help people shift from the idea of I'm a maker of money to I'm a receiver of money, right? That, that, that energy of money is out there and we just have lots of, there are so many different ways to receive it uh, instead of feeling like, okay, I have to make it, I have to make it, I have to make it, or I'm going to die alone in my kid's basement or out on the street in a cardboard box, right? <laughs> you know, there's just, there, there's so many endpoints that the, the, that fear can take us. So what would you say to people as they're starting to say, okay, now I'm, I'm kind of getting it. I'm kind of getting that, yeah, there's these systems out there that I can lean on for some support, but I really want to, I really want to understand more about myself and money uh, and being sovereign in the, that area of money. What kind of recommendations do you have for people about learning how to be sovereign? And I know that's a huge question. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's going in. So I always have money around me. So, right. Like nice. grab, grab some money, grab a dollar, grab a hundred, grab whatever's nearby. Even if it's just coins, connect with it and have, have a conversation or open yourself to explore deeper. You can hire people to help you with this, but you can do this on your own. And ultimately you're looking to figure out where your blocks are, where you're feeling stuck, but also finding your superpowers and your creative flow. What excites you? What brings you joy? Like, what is it that's going to allow you to create value? Because a lot of the, the people I work with, they're not motivated by money, right? Money is just this piece that, you know, you need it and it's very 3D. And as we're moving to become more spiritual and just awakening our consciousness is evolving, we need to understand what it is that ignites within us the gifts that we have. So it's it's just taking a, a, a different stance. It's looking in, it's going deeper. It's maybe finding some support if you need to find books and books help you learn. But the sheer fact that you even have the willingness to go and look, you're already gonna be sending out that signal to the universe, out to God to bring you exactly what you need. And you'll start to see that synchronicity and the magic and the, the luck of it. Like, oh my gosh, this person just landed. This is exactly what I was, I was wanting to know. And I'm diving deeper into the cryptocurrency to help my clients to understand because I know my industry is not gonna necessarily touch it. So again, if you suddenly feel like I, I wanna know more, that's already the exciting piece because that's it. Even if you haven't verbalized it, you're already sending that signal out and that's going to already shift where you've been to find the next right pieces. Beautiful. There's so many, there's several things in there that I want to highlight. First of all, I love that you said that you don't have to be motivated by money to be following this path, right? To be more conscious in the area of money. I do think some people think, whoa, well, I, I want to participate in the conversation, but I don't, I'm not that kind of person. I don't, you know, I, I don't need my bank accounts full. What I want is to travel. What I want is to be able to take this craft that I've done on my own and share it with the world, right? It's, it's those kinds of things. And then this idea of, of igniting super, your superpowers, right? And knowing your superpowers. I love money as an entrance to learning about yourself, right? Because we all need money. We have all right. I guess you could call it a belief, but at this point, we're in a 3D planet, right? Roof over our heads. We need food. At this point, we're, we're using money. And if we can take that actual need to 
ignite us in a new way. I, I just, it's just, it's just fantastic. It's just fantastic. So on that note, we're going to take a, a quick break. And when we come back, um, Alana and I are both going to be sharing a little bit about how you can find out about your superpowers and, and how that relates to money. So if uh, you're listening to Soul Wisdom Abundance with me, your host, Jennifer Bloom, we will be right back. Hello and welcome back. This is Soul Wisdom Abundance with me, your host, Jennifer Bloom, and my guest, Alana Heim. And you know what, Alana, before we step into um, sharing soul, uh, soul language and human design, can you share a little bit about where people can find you uh, if they're interested in learning more about your work? Yes. So my business is Prosperity Alignment. You can find me at prosperityalignment.com. I run free human design charts. So that's prosperityalignment.com slash how. And if you want the chart, and we're going to dive a little bit more into that, then please request it and we can connect. Um, I have a free prosperity breakthrough session. You can find that on the website as well. And I am on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook. Super. And all of, the, all of those specific links will be in our show notes. So there's lots of different ways. I highly encourage all of you to, to take a look at what Alana's got out there. Um, it's really a unique blend. So, um, all right. So let's start talking again. You mentioned before the word superpowers and, um, one of the ways I love to look at superpowers is through the lens of soul language, which people who have listened uh, to the podcast know that it's a, it's a paradigm for understanding ourselves as a soul. So we bring in energies, three of the 107 different voices of, soul, of the divine, actually. We bring those in as our personal energies. And then we also bring in energies to support us in all of our primary relationships. Um, uh, whether that's a love partnership, whether it's a partnership with your family or your business or with money. So um, with your permission, I identified one of your money languages and I'm, I'm excited to share it with you. And then what I'll do is I'll share the language and the description of it, um, which includes things that you would notice if you were connected to really conscious of this energy and things you'd notice if you were not conscious and um, playing with the energy, right? We all, all have our shadows. Uh, and so then what I'd love to do is just, number one, find out how it resonates with you, but then also talk about how that energy is supportive in how you think about and playing with money, okay? So the, I always ask um, when I make my connections, because the, the way that you get identified is making a one-time connection with your soul. That's what I did before our call today. And I ask which of the, the three categories would be the most useful for our conversation today. So the one that came up was axiom of translation. This is the, uh, in the money world, this is the energetic how, meaning this is energetically how you like to play with money. All right, and, and how you can energetically create and receive. And for you, it is called Transformer. So let me tell you a little bit about Transformer. This sacred partnership with money languages skill is being able to uplift and transform through feelings and beliefs about money to allow a stronger flow. Your how of making money is being aware of the highest potential for money and allow that awareness to create insight for action um, and doing steps. The special talents of Transformer, and this is the energy that when you're consciously connected to it, things that you're going to notice, you understand the difference between ego money, wants and needs, and divine money, wants, needs, and drives. You're able to see what ego really wants from money, and you're able to make that transformation so that money comes easily. You can see the same kinds of patterns for others and help others make that same transformation. When you're disconnected from transformer energy, things you might notice, you get drawn into only listening to the ego about money. Money becomes about safety, value, love, and not about divine love. You ask money to be what transforms you instead of allowing the transformation of yourself and trusting that money follows. So as you hear that, tell me what pops for you. Well, first of all, I'm super excited because I feel like that just put everything to why I'm the rebel, why I'm in the energy side, why I can be very practical in the 3D and help my clients understand the money piece, but also 
be able to translate and explain some of the how pieces of spirit and, and source coming through and how it all works together. And the lower aspects, the shadows, it doesn't relate. Um, I feel like because I was able to be the CPA, I always learned through my clients. So mm-hmm. I don't, I don't have that money story that most people have where it's like, wah, 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 here's what happened. I went bankrupt or I lost this, or I don't have any of that, but I could see it and live through my clients and understand what they went through. And that gave me the experience and the insight or the ability to be able to help them transform it. And, and so that's, that really is the gift that I bring when I'm working with my clients and why they come to me. Yeah, you know, I go back to the story you were sharing earlier about people who were millionaires, right, are millionaires or millionaires, at least on paper. Yeah. But then, right, but when it comes right down to it, they're not living a life that they want. They are leveraged, I believe is the word you mm-hmm. used, right? And so what that sounds like to me is there's not a lot of money available to be playing or doing the things that they want to do. Right. Um, And so to really understand, I mean, there's no, there's no, there's nothing wrong with having an ego desire, right, and, and funding it. Um, We don't have to always be spiritual woo woo with our money to be able to be conscious with money. If, if I want a, a, um, a red car, which is funny, because I'm not really a car person, I should be able to, to create that, right. But if we're only following that, or if we want the red car because somebody in our past said, well, you're only successful if you get the red one, mm-hmm. right? That, that, that's the reason, that those, that's where ego goes wild. And we, that, that's the part that we want to release. So here with your, the, the transformer, right? Being able to help people understand that difference between ego and connection and if when you're in that connected place, when you're making decisions, it is going to create all the difference in the world. Yeah. Because when you know what you want and you actually proclaim it and take a stand for it, it it doesn't matter what other people are going to think. It's doesn't matter if they're going to judge you. It's you're following this alignment piece. You're connecting to your higher self to go for what it is that you want. And sometimes you just have to try it on. And in that piece where you go for it and realize, eh, I didn't really want that. It was fun or it was part of the learning experience, but here's what I really want. And so using that, that dance of polarity to know, are you too ego? Or are you in what you don't want? Sometimes helps to shoot you back into the trajectory of what you do want. And it's, it's those moments where you had to have that experience simply to then become on that path of alignment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, we won't we won't take the time to do it here. But one thing to let you know, this is an energy that you can actually speak to. So this is, you know, if there was something that maybe you needed some um, words for a client, or even words for yourself, right? Because we all get into those places where we need a little bit of transformation around our own thoughts, right? You can connect into that energy and ask, what's my next being step here? What's that next internal step so that I can create transformation? Or what's the next doing step? Um, And maybe it's seek out somebody who calls herself a a rebel CPA, right? You're not looking for that, right? But, but, you know, when you, when you understand I'm here, right, carrying that energy, one of my superpowers is about transformation. Then you get to use that tool to help you actually create that transformation for yourself first and then for others. Yeah. And, and it's part of my design, right? That I have Correct. to learn for myself. I have to stand in my own integrity, right? I have to try crypto first before I can talk about it. And the, just the transformation itself, like I've known I'm here to help with the transformation of prosperity consciousness, to shift the way we see money, how we've treated it, how it really is here to support us and just allowing people to bring it in because they want it because they're not afraid of it anymore it's it's not all the stories and beliefs that people put on it that you get to choose it for yourself beautiful really really well said okay so let's pause the the soul language conversation and i'm going to pass the floor to you and let's talk a little bit about human design yes so to go back to the making decision piece 
that's what I want to focus on. Okay. There's a, an authority aspect that comes through human design. So authority in the way of you have your own in, inner way of making decisions for yourself, your own inner authority. So a lot of times we actually move outward and focus on the external and think that I have a problem, Jennifer, what do you think I should do? Hey, right? like how many times do we do that? Where we're, we're kind of knotted up. We we're unsure. So when it comes to our finances, I mentioned this, we really need to know who we are and how we make decisions. Mm -hmm. So for you, Jennifer, I, I was um, given the opportunity to run your human design chart and you're um, a type that's called a manifest that manifesting generator, but your authority is emotional. So half the population is emotional and just even having this awareness, no matter what work you're in or what career you have or the business you have, sales teaches us to just get the sale in the moment. Guess what? Emotional people cannot make a decision in the moment. They really can't. And if they do, it's because they are conditioned to just make the, the quick on your feet, get in your head, just, you know, we hear that in business. If you can make a fast decision, right, you're going to be successful. All of these stories, they're not true. So for Jennifer, for myself, for those of you who run your chart and you find that you have this solar plexus defined, you have emotional waves. And what do we know about waves? They go up. Oh, and they come down and we have to honor the up and the down. And we have to find a congruent aligned high vibrational. Yes. In both places. So that means when we are feeling melancholy, we're feeling down. We have to still feel really good about the decision. And we still want to say yes, even in that lower vibrational space. And when we're in the higher happy, like related, whatever that may be, that's usually the easier piece where we just know this is what we want. For generator types, so this does include you, Jennifer, you have a sacral, a defined sacral, which means it operates as a GPS system for you. You don't have to go seeking answers outside of yourself. You don't even have to go into your head. It's right there in the gut. It knows yes or no the truth. And for you, you'll get that gut instinct. You'll get that gut intuition. So do I want to invest in real estate? Uh, -uh. and immediately like that's your no, which means you don't even have to go through your emotional wave to, to change it because it's already a no, but when you already are kind of like, ah, you know, it feels like, uh, huh, but you give yourself a little bit of time and space with your emotional wave that could be throughout the day that could be by tomorrow right maybe you need to sleep on it you're allowing your emotional energy to bring up whatever triggers that show up whatever hesitations are there and sometimes it's it's not about the energy it's about the timing mm. sometimes your no can be a no for right now meaning maybe it just doesn't feel aligned to do the investment in real estate it's not a no forever, but maybe, you know, six months from now, something shifts and suddenly you're ready or you just feel this calling, right? You can, you can tap into asking yourself yes, no questions, having somebody else ask you and really starting to listen from within. And that means it doesn't matter if your advisor is pressuring you, your spouse is pressuring you, you start to really go inward to connect with yourself. So Again, half the population is going to have that emotional energy for making decisions. And then you have some others who are just pure sacral, right? They're just going to have a gut instinct. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They know in the moment. They truly do not need more time because that's when they're probably going to go up to their head. And what I say is they're going to play ping pong, oh. right? Mm -hmm. Well, I could say yes. I could say no. I could, right? And we do this dance of confusing ourselves, where instinctively you really have to decondition and learn to get back into the body, get into that gut response and listen to it. And it can feel scary especially when your head gets in the way. Right. So I'm just, so does this resonate? Like, can you feel that you do have a gut instinct and that you do have the emotional wave? 
Absolutely. And I can tell because I would typically say that I'm somebody I know, you know, if 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 I'm if I'm reading through an email and you know, somebody's offering a program, I typically would say I'm a yes or a no in that moment. And I, I know I don't need a lot of time. But I also really recognize that emotional wave. I yes, I am definitely <laughs> having those waves and ups and downs. So it's really fascinating to hear about okay maybe to and so i'm curious about this and you can let me know but so if if it's a yes or no like i read the email yes or no and it's a yes what i what i'm hearing from you is check in and notice where i am am i up here or am i down mm -hmm. here okay. and if i'm up here when i'm feeling that yes no take a breath mm -hmm. <laughs> don't hit by right now mm -hmm. wait and evaluate it maybe at other points of the day and check it and make sure that that gut is actually a, a, a was actually an accurate gut response. Yes, that it's still a yes. Because unless, because because here's the thing, you have to really start to tap into your emotions, which would none of us have ever been taught. Mm -hmm. Those of us who are emotional, we've learned to suppress it, repress it, hold it in. And then the rest of the world doesn't know how to handle if we do have the emotional response. So we've just felt safe to hold it back. But it is a big part of your creative flow. And I have to say that the more that I go through my own emotional waves, like my duration is so much shorter and I move things so much faster. Once I dip down, I get upset. I see, I start to see new possibilities I couldn't see before. And it's like, oh, that that's the brilliance. So the more that you get in tune with knowing what you want, the faster you're going to, you're going to go through your emotional wave. Mm -hmm. So right now, like you, you know, it's a yes, you need to now start to know where are you in your wave. And when you give yourself more time, it, you're going to naturally find that you're in another part of your wave and you really want the yes at the bottom, the yes at the top, boom, it's a yes, it's a go. Interesting. That's really fascinating. Um, I just I, I just had an example of what you were sharing. So I had a pretty big dip yesterday. I've been it's you know, you kind of go through transformational times in your life. I'm in one of those places right now where I'm really working through another layer, which is cool. Um, but I had a real low yesterday. And my typical response in the past would have been to reach out to somebody help me feel better. Right. But I sat with it. And then this morning, I went to one of the places where I'm always connected. I know the wave is going to be back up. And the space between down here and up here, an answer came for what I was looking for, right? It was, it was right there. And I could feel it in both places that it was, that it was something that was very accurate. So that's, I really appreciate having that language and understanding that a little better. And then also being careful about, it. and I'm not a huge, you know, buy in the moment kind of person. I'm not, I don't watch QVC and, you know, fill my bookcases with little coin bears or anything. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That's what you love. <laughs> um, right. But um, that's, that's really, that's really interesting. Um, and something I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to play with. Uh, fascinating. So know that depending on how you're configured in your chart, right? There's, there's openness, which means that's where you're receptive to feeling other people's influence and energy, right? There can be lots of pressure that comes mm -hmm. in, which is what our fear-based sales tactics, old way of business has been doing. It's pressure buy now, um, face the objections and, and, overcome it. And, um, I mean, I've had the conversation myself where. I know myself so much and I need the time to make a decision. So now I ask for it and I demand it. And if they're not willing to listen to me, to hear that I need more time and I'm not there, that's not an excuse. That's who I am. If they can't honor it, I already know it's a hard no. And, and honestly, if you just say, okay, let's reschedule, let's talk tomorrow or, you know, what works for you? Oh my gosh, that is like such a breath of expansion of space and fresh air for me to go, oh, now I can really sit with it. I already am feeling good. I just know that I have to honor myself. And if I, if I don't hold that boundary, right, I'm not honoring myself. And that means I'm already making a decision that's still too hasty and isn't going to align for me. 
Yeah. And if somebody's not willing to give you that space, you know that you're not going to, you know, ultimately whatever it is they're offering isn't even, it can't even possibly be a match, right? If, if they're not willing to, to back off and say, yes, I honor you in this process. And, and again, that comes back to power and being willing to say, this is what I need, right? It's not even a question. I need 24 hours, 36, 48, whatever it is that, that's that magic number for you, right? And being willing to expect it. Yes. And when you start realizing you're not a vibrational match because they're coming from that fear place or scarcity based or whatever it may be. And they're trying to reach a quota and they see you as yeah. part of the quota. You already <laughs> know it's, it's not the consciousness piece we're looking for where we're evolving and opening ourselves to trust and to be able to ask or demand, right? Like that's power in itself because that's usually what we've, we've forgotten. We weren't allowed to just step up and say, Hey, this is what I need or, or this is what I want. And when we can hold that for ourselves, you're already claiming sovereignty. And that yeah. that's the fun part. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So as we kind of come to the end of our conversation, we've got a few more minutes. Um, as people are starting to digest all of this and go, oh, I'm curious about all of this. Uh, you know, clearly you have a, lot, a number of tools that people can reach for and, and you work with people, I'm assuming across the globe. Yes. Um, if somebody is looking for someone to be a match, right? Somebody who, who um, is going to be supportive in the financial field, in the, right? How do you suggest going about looking for someone? What, what should you look for uh, so that you can get supported as opposed to, you know, directed? Yeah. And, and just to um, wrap up with the, the making decisions with human yep. design, there's some other alternate ways. There's some other aspects I didn't talk about today. So again, some people have a will center, maybe they have, um, so this willfulness, they kind of come from their heart space. Maybe they do have a splenic. It's a little different than the gut, but it's very similar in the moment. Some people have to talk it out. So when you get your chart, that's the piece where you can start to understand this part. And that's huge because to go back to the question you just asked, when you start to know how you make decisions, you're already gonna to start to get curious about what, what it is that you want, what you're looking for. So you can ask yourself, you know, if you are that sacral being, do I want somebody who is more an expert in the financial industry as a planner, right? Like what part of support is it that you are looking for? Do you need more of the guiding, coaching, consulting aspect where people can really help you with the shadows, um, to work deeper with money, to get more of that clarity? Or do you want more of the strategy and the, the tax planning? And then you're going to have an, an idea and you can send that out to the universe of this is what I'm looking for and start either taking action to make it happen, to ask people you know, do you have a planner that you like? And then remember, you can interview them as much as they're going to interview you. You don't have to just pick one person. You really want to allow for that space to be open, to resonate, to make sure that they're gonna allow you to make the decisions. They're not gonna berate you and you know judge you and shame you for not listening to them and doing the things that they think you should do. You're, you're learning to honor and even ask for the space to make the decision if you need more time and you're following that. You're just more and more, you're gonna do that at home. You're gonna do that at work. You're gonna do that with money. You're gonna do it everywhere you go. And that becomes your new unconscious habit, right? Mm. You, you, you start to break free of the old ways and you start to build in this new habit. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That idea of expectation that you get to show up as you in the world. Mm. What a gift from money, right? Again, yeah. uh, thinking about money as a teacher, what an incredible, incredible gift to be able to take that and own it and let it percolate through every single relationship without having it to be a, a mentally driven something, right? It just becomes that part of your beingness, part of your vibration, part of your frequency. Uh, and it's not about being, it's not about being egotistical, right? It's not about being in that space of um, entitlement. 
but rather a really solid grounded knowing of who you are and how you move in the world. Yeah. yeah. And then you raise that consciousness, that frequency of energy, you're going to start tapping into resources you never even knew existed. And that means money. You're going to tap into new levels of money, allowing it to come forth in ways that your brain never even saw coming, right? Even in business, personally, if you think I have to get to this number and this is the only way, right? You start breaking free of that mental um, imprisonment and you start trusting the flow that's within you to connect to those resources. And then you get to say yes when it shows up because you're open and ready and willing to receive. Yeah, I was just, I'm smiling because I, you know, um, as, again, we're kind of wrapping up here, but thinking about the magic that's really involved in all of this. And as soon as you start claiming and things start showing up, you know, it's it just, it. I don't know. It's just amazing. It's just a, a, a beautiful new kind of world to live in, right? Yeah. Well, Alana, thank you so much uh, for, for being a guest here today and sharing all your wisdom. Um, I, I really appreciate it. I know there's a lot more we could speak about, but I'm, I'm really glad that you were here. No, yeah, thank you so much. This was fun. I really enjoy being able to connect with you, with the audience, with humanity, right? We're all shifting yeah. and growing and, and bringing in more value in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. So for those of you who are listening, thank you for being a part of our community. Your energy adds to the to the conversation, whether you know it or not. Uh, and um, it's just uh, if there is, uh, if this conversation has ignited in you a desire to know more about your soul money relationship, you can come to my website, which is jenniferbloom.com. I have a free quiz that's going to help you understand a little bit more about the different dynamics of your personal relationship. And uh, the Soul Wisdom Abundance podcast is here the first and third Fridays of every month. And we are uh, next time talking all about leadership and, uh, and, and asking for what you want. So it's a really great flow <laughs> coming out of here. So until then, I wish each of you prosperous blessings. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Soul Wisdom Abundance with Jennifer Bloom, creating wealth from spiritual health on TransformationTalkRadio.com. To learn more about Jennifer Bloom or listen to past shows, visit jenniferbloom.com. You can subscribe to this podcast on any of your favorite podcasting outlets. Simply search Soul Wisdom Abundance with Jennifer Bloom.